go to town. I just remembered it for 40 years. Quiet, you. You might have been. Why do you think I'm giving you a chance that nobody never gave me? You know why? Because when I look at you, I see me a long time ago. Just like me. Full of dilly hell and spoiling the trouble. With the whole world kicking in the backside. I'm going to make it easy for you. So don't argue with me. Ain't them got it cut my heart out for what I'm giving you free for nothing. 250,000 iron men. A quarter of a million dollars in gold. So don't argue with me. And don't never write it down. Never write it. And don't ever write it down. All right. <laughs> Son, you still have the tag. Thanks.
Don't pop your fingers at me, boy. What do I got to do to get waited on? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very funny. I said, what do I got to do to get waited on? Shout or something? What would you find in this joint to shout about, boy? Drop the gum. Okay, your reverence. Anything else, your reverence? That's what I come in for. See you spit your gum out. Okay, now get on with a pig sandwich and lots of hot stuff and slaw. I said you have to wait. Nobody laughed that time. Until tomorrow. Kitchen's closed. You need some help, Hank? Who from? Just put a dime in the box and mind your own business. I'll give you a ready-made sandwich, that's all. All right. Beer or pop? Make it beer. <laughs> Doesn't make any difference. Why did you lean your head back in there? What? That boot. Lean your head back and bent your neck. But maybe I'm tired. It was beautiful. Suppose you want to dance, huh? That's right. What are you, some kind of... 
son of a creep. No, I drink like a fish. Sorry to be so late, man. I was with her. Well, I just can't quit a friendly poker game with her. I would. Hey, fella. We're close enough. Why don't you call it a night, huh? Oh, wait. Go on. I'll be turning off the light. Police chief, man, Hannibal. There's that guy. What does he look like? I was drunk. I didn't make him. Where'd you pick that up? Make him. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, hey, take it easy, will you? Hank found you, kid. We brought you over here in my car. You win this out of the points? That's cute, yes, sir. That's real cute. Where you from? L.A. What's your name? Monday? Monday what? Joe Monday. Take this. What is it? Take it. That'll put him to sleep in a little while. Want to keep him here? No, he can go. Where you staying? I ain't got a place. We can fix you up with a bed at the jail. No, oh, no, you don't. You don't bag me. Now, who said anything about bagging? You're clean, son. You've been robbed. What do you know about that? I never would have thought of that. Hank, Mrs. Williams got any rooms? Yeah, sure, I guess so. Fix them up? I'll drive him over. Stop around, see me tomorrow. We'll try to get a line on the guy that mugged you. Now, Joe, I got your towel. What would I do with a crummy doll? Thanks, Mr. Ding. Good night, Hank. Good night. That's you, Hank. I brought you a customer, Mrs. Williams. The fella needs a room. He ain't feeling so good. I'm sorry to hear that you're poorly, but Mr. Uh, Joe Monday. I'm Clem Williams. I'm not sure the room's here. Oh, I expect we can talk about that in the morning since you're feeling so poorly. Fifteen dollars. Breakfast and dinner. A week, that is. Well, I, uh, I don't know how long I'm going to be staying here. <laughs> Just as long as you want. Hey, you know the vacancies as well as us. Take them right on upstairs. Come on. Why don't you give them number six, Hank? Now, that's a fine room, Joe. Mama, why don't we snack a little before turning in, huh? Would you like some canned peaches, Clem? Mm, that sounds good, Mama. 
Well, good morning, Joe. Come right in and meet the post. Post? This is the fella had that little accident last night. You know, Hank filled me in on that difficulty. A little bad luck there, Joe. You know, I don't know what this town's coming to. Oh, this is Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson's a brakeman on the Southern Pacific. And Mr. Felton here represents the Country Gentleman magazine in this territory. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Latimer, ladies first. Mrs. Latimer's been living with us ever since her husband died. And these are the Long Brothers, Diggs and Jig. Oh, yeah. They're in the cesspool cleaning business. We call them honey dippers here. <laughs> no offense, fellas. <laughs> See what our new guests will have for breakfast. You have eggs, too. Any style you want them. Orange juice can. Okay. Well, how do you want them? Easiest way. What business you in? Mechanic. Locating here? It all depends. Might try the sugar mill. They hire a lot of mechanics there. Maybe I will. Well, now, I guess I'd better get about it. Nice that you're with us, Joe. Get about what? What's he always getting about? Pinball machines. He just plunks pinball machines all day. He's very good to his mother. Huh. He ought to be. She's supporting him all his life. Well, Cunulus and Strong, he's always been weakly. Your brain, you mean. Him and that brother of his. His whole family, if you ask me. I'm sick and tired of him and his jokes. <coughs> Honey dippers. It's honest work. Welcome. You work all the time? Night and day? What about? Well, you got a sick father or something to support? I got me. That's a lot. Yeah, I guess maybe it is. I guess I was pretty much of a jerk last night in the diner. That's all right. We get lots of jerks in the diner. Well, let's get going. Hold your horses, little brother. Let him get way ahead. He's going to run into Uncle George. Well, George will play it cozy. Ah, he's an old fool. Well, now, that's no words to speak about your poor old Uncle George, little brother. Uncle George has had a hard time, same as us. He ain't got all these marbles. Oh, be nice, little brother. Families just got to love one another. What you doing around here? Maybe I'm waiting for a train. Well, you're on my property. It's some property. Anyways, it's mine. It's yours. You live back there. I seen you snooping around my house. Oh, you're trying to rouse somebody. But you did, and you get. What's your name, Pop? It ain't Pop. And you just shake a leg before I split you between the eyes. Okay, Pop. I was going anyway. <laughs> Thanks. 
Thanks for the hospitality. Hey, now you cut that out, Pop. Oh! Oh, buzzard, I'm going. You ain't going fast enough. All right, now don't you throw any more rocks, Pop. Throw any more, I'm gonna take a stick to you. Some cats is put on the jackrabbit, ain't I? Oh my my, that Uncle George. <laughs> Come on, let's get him. For what? He must have got the map with him. You didn't find it on him last night, did you? No, sir. That's not the smart thing anyway, little brother. Things to wait and keep them close. You ain't going after that cash without a car or truck or something. Just getting the lay of the land. But he knows all right, little brother. He... What's your name, young fellow? Why? That's your identification. My name's Joe Mundy. The chief wants to see you. What's the charge? Come on. That ain't legal. Make a charge. He just said to pick you up. Just like that, huh? What if he said go jump in the lake? We jump. Let's go. in my town, Joe. Cops think they own everything, don't they? I've been a law here for more than a while, Joe. I've got a proprietary interest in who's born, who dies, who comes, and who goes. Maybe I'm looking for work. Maybe not. Joseph Mundy, General Commitment, State School of Correction, 1946 to 1951, State Penitentiary Manslaughter, July 1953 to April 30, 1956. That was yesterday. You still smell of disinfectant. Okay, I'll eat. Uh... What kind of a job are you looking for, Joe? Uh, just a job. Now, you got a trade in reform school, didn't you? Everybody gets a trade in reform school. Automobile. Hold a second, will you, Joe? I guess you can stay around for a while if you keep your nose clean. A fellow like you's got to make a stand somewhere, I guess. Maybe I can help. Oh, I'll manage. Do it yourself. How'd you get along with Ned Blaze? He was a cellmate of yours, wasn't he? Yeah, for a while. He died. I know. Ned came from this part of the country, he tell you. That old creep never said nothing to me about anything. He was stir crazy, you know? Yeah, he was quite a famous man in his time. Ned was one of the last of the Western bandits. He got out of the federal penitentiary, let's see, in uh, 1923, I think it was. Homestead at a little ranch up in the hills right near here. And that doesn't interest you, does it, Joe? Well, yeah, if I gotta listen. No, 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 you can go. Well, what happened? <clears throat> oh, nothing much for a couple of years. Then the Southern Pacific Railroad got held up a couple of miles from here. 500 pounds, new minute gold, almost a quarter of a million dollars. I brought Ned in for questioning, first thing. Couldn't tie him into it. About a week later, got into a scrap right here in town. Knifed a man to death. Got light. I guess that's all there is, Joe. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> Ever fish? No, I never had much of a chance. Want to try it? Yeah. Easy. Here. Could be the 
Anybody else was down here. What are you doing hanging around? Well, who's hanging around? I gotta live, don't I? I'm not in your way. Well, who said you was? I just come down here to look at the water. Why don't you come over here and sit down? For what? Oh, I don't know. Maybe we can talk or something. I told you I'd just come down here to look at the water. Pretty, ain't it? The carnival. Is it? Well, you're looking at it. You can see. I've seen a thousand of them. I come here with the carnival. I rented a swing or a loop-de-loop. -loop. We'd hit the road each year. Pigsty living. Sleeping in a tent, taking a bath out of a bucket. No. I don't think it's pretty. How long you been here? Three years. Pa picked up with a sideshow shaker who was dirtier than he was. And I dumped him. Nobody cared. How come you're in, uh, Spendale, Mr., uh... What's your name? Seems like people are always saying that to me. What's your name? Where you going? What are you doing? Where you been? Can't hardly remember a time anybody ever said anything else. But there's gonna be a day. There's gonna come a day and they'll say to me, Hello, Mr. Mundy. <laughs> what do you say, Mr. Mundy? Come right in, Mr. Mundy. Oh, yeah, that'll be the day. I've seen your kind all my life. You drift in from nowhere, you get a couple of bucks in your pocket and you drift back out again. No ties. No place to come from and no place to go. Yeah, that'll be the day. You better not get too close to me. Never tell what I might do. I ain't scared of you. Two jobs, why don't you get yourself a pair of decent shoes? You sure got a lot of nerve. If you don't like them, you don't have to look at them. I was just asking. Well, you sure got a lot of nerve. Okay, forget it. I won't pay more than two dollars for shoes. Not now I won't. But there's going to come a time when I'm going to have handmade shoes in Paris or one of them places with rhinestone buckles and four-inch heels. That'll be the day. Okay. Tit for tat. But I mean it. I'm going to be rich and beautiful. Because when you're rich, you're beautiful. How are you going to do that? Sling and hash? I'm saving for it. What, I'm 35 bucks a week? 45. 45. <laughs> well, what are you laughing about? Hey, <laughs> wait a oh. minute. Hey. Look, I didn't come here for you to laugh at me. I got no reason to laugh at you. Well, 
kebahagiaan saya dengan fancy ones with a silver ball on top and a poem with special and I'm gonna get one of them them big racing speedboats with a mahogany wheel and brass trimmings and I'll bring it cut and pass down on folks and say there goes Cap Williams and me with one of those those blue hats with a gold braid on like an admiral Papa comes first little brother oh I'm gonna get me one of them dishwasher machines. And I'm gonna stick every dish in it. And rub my hands with rose oil. And just sit back and watch that machine swish them old dishes around. <laughs> I washed a jillion dishes in my life. But I ain't gonna wash no more. <laughs> Won't be long now, Mama. I never thought I'd live to see the day. Shop up on Third Street. What's he doing? Looking for a job? With all that money? Soft, little brother. Soft now. He's busted. Like I say, he's got to have a car to haul that gold in. He's got to get it to Mexico to get rid of it. That takes money. Well, how much longer we got to wait? Maybe we can hurry things. Maybe we can make a deal. I'll think about it, little brother. Mr. 
for Sasha. That's me. Junior, that is. Oh, is your pa around here any place? No, Sid will be back in a minute. You got a job you want done? Oh, I thought maybe you had a job you wanted done. A guy down the street. Your body man? Yeah. Wrecker? Well, yeah, a little bit. Know about tire work? It's easy. Stick around. Coming for the show. Lousy trooper Capon. You're called Brokaw's record. I'm a Brokaw's cousin. Capon never calls us. Why don't you beat Brokaw out? What do you mean? Well, the first guy there in an emergency gets the job. At least that's the way I've always heard it. Sid never did that. Anyway, it's too late. Or Brokaw will be going out any minute. That's the ambulance heading out now. Which way does it go? Out Main Street. Hey, you want to be broke on? I don't know. Well, you better make up your mind. <laughs> Look, fella, we ain't even hired you yet. This is for free. Sid will kill me. <laughs> Come on, let's see if you can do it. Hey, let me try it, will you? Get that wrecker out of here. You weren't called. Radio says an emergency. Where I come from, that's a free throw. Well, who are you? I got here first. He's our new driver. Let's get that boat over here. Hey! Hey! Throw one of those boats over here, will ya? Let me see the driver's life. Officer, that's my trailer and it's sinking. I want it out of the lake quickly. Look, Brokaw, this ain't a one wreck -er job. It'll take both of us. Okay, okay. Will you heap up to the edge there and run a cable down to that road?
falling down faster. It's almost over the window. My son in line. Hey, where'd he come from? He just came in looking for a job, Dad. I've got that dog. Let's roll them. Now, oh, wait a minute. I can get in to steal some air under that roof. You're crazy. She might blow a seam any second and go down like a rock. underwater. Yeah, take it, will you? All right, stand by up there. Okay, poor car. And get out and roll them, will you? friend of mine, Kevin. I guess it's okay, then. Go on, Mr. Alfred. Let's get the details. I'll see that you get a license. Come to my office as soon as you get back to town. What's with you, anyway? Everybody gets a break sometime, Joe. Even you. I 
picture in the paper? Oh, I can't say that I did. Jess. This is pretty famous now, aren't you? Could I have your autograph? Well, I didn't mean it that way. It's just that it's the first time I ever had my picture in the paper, that's all. Aren't you working? Six closed on Monday. You know, I didn't mean to make you mad last night. Should we just forget about it? No, uh, you, uh, well, this afternoon, you really looked all right. Well, how do you mean that? Well, how do you think I mean in your bathing suit? Well, I wasn't just standing around there for you to look at. Oh, forget it. Want a cigarette? You don't smoke, huh? Well, uh, saving money? I guess you think I'm pretty cheap, don't you? Oh, no, just joking. I guess I am. I gotta be. You know, I liked you the very first time I ever seen you. You come down the counter and spit in my eye? You sure wasn't very polite. That don't work for me, though. You know, I try being nice, and I get shoved around. So I just shove first. You're a funny fella. Look who's talking. No, I mean like today. Like, why did you risk your life to save that dog? Oh, I'm... I just wasn't thinking, I guess. I heard the mud in the trailer, and I had to get him out. Who knows why you do anything? I know why I do. You know why you came out here with me tonight? No, not exactly. But I'm gonna find out. When? When I'm ready. Hey! Ain't them new shoes? <laughs> Six dollars. Those are pretty. Thunderhead's getting closer. Well, I think we better get. 
get going. Let me ask you something. Have you figured out what you came out with me tonight? Yes. Bad night. What the devil are you doing in here? Well, we're not going to get any place if you make all that noise. What do you want? First you send your brother sneaking around after me, then you go hiding in a corner. Little brother told me you caught him. You oughtn't have been out there, but little brother's real anxious. He was afraid you might tell Hank or somebody else. What are you talking about? Well, this is no place to talk about anything. Why don't we go down to the office? I don't know what you're selling. I'm not buying it. Now you've got the wrong idea, Joe. Then spell it out. G O L D. Now that's the way I spell it, Joe. Office is in the basement. You go right through the kitchen. Still don't know what you're talking about. I'll be waiting for you in the office, Joe. Close the 
door behind the door. Want some home canned plums, Joe? Yo, Mama, these plums sure are good, you know. <laughs> oh, you never met your little brother, Joe. I've seen you around. And that gentleman over there, that's my Uncle George. Uncle George's always throwing rocks at somebody. He gives us quite a time, don't you, Uncle George? <laughs> Uncle George is Papa's older brother. Ned Glaze murdered our Papa, Joe. He chopped him to death with a knife. That was a bad time for us. Why don't you just set down someplace, Joe? I'm going to get me a big white Arabian and a silver saddle and come a rip snort and a hoot and ride through town. <laughs> Uncle George been a sheep herder most of his life. Just hate sheep, don't you, Uncle George? <laughs> well, I love horses. I'm going to be a cowboy. I'm going to get me a hundred head of horse and ride a different one every day. Woo-wee! Now, what's Joe going to think if we act like that, little brother? Little brother's a nervous type, Joe. You just don't pay no attention to him. Now we're going to be friends, ain't we, Joe? Look, I... I ain't got nothing against you. I don't even know what you want. And there you go, playing footsie. Well, I expect you've got a right to know who you're dealing with. Papa was the other man on that Santa Fe holdup. Him and Ned stashed the gold. And then Ned did Papa in. Make any sense, Joe? Nobody but Papa and Ned knew where that gold was. Papa told Mama some of it, how the trail began at the ranch and a few other things. Uncle George just walked his poor old feet to the nub for more than 30 years looking for that gold. Didn't you, Uncle George? Mama. Mama's worked her poor fingers to the bone all that time. And her, her the richest woman in town by rights. Mama, why don't you stop knitting, Mama? You're making Joe nervous. Main thing is, Joe, that gold is ours and not yours. That's all Papa left us. We just rent this old barn. That gold is mine and little brother's birthright. Now, you can see that, Joe, can't you? We've been waiting a long time. You got the secret and it's ours. We expect you to tell us. Of course, we don't expect to leave you out. I don't see no reason why we can't split five ways. Do you, Uncle George? <laughs> well, we're honest, God-fearing folk. We're doing our share, share, and share alike. And besides, we got enough money to manage the whole operation. We got a car to move the gold in. And you ain't got nothing. Now, what do you say, Joe? Don't you think that's mighty nice of us? I don't know you, and I don't know you. Uh -oh. Brother's the one that clobbered you when you first come into town. He sure means business, don't he? All right. All right, I'll tell you. Now, memorizing, that's pretty hard doing because there's so many details. And then I forget some of it. I forget it the other night when that big slob sandbagged me. I just can't remember the way no more. Go ahead and hit me again. Maybe I'll forget some more of it. You gonna swallow that? Oh, Clem ain't got much choice. Maybe, Clem, when you know hitting a guy in the head is liable to jar his brain loose. Don't you think so, Clem? Now, you say you forgot, but you still know some of it. Well, tell me just that, and... I'll tell you what we know. Maybe we can piece it together. I don't feel so good. I'm going to bed. My brain's getting looser. How dumb do you think I am? Beat it. Go on, scram. Some kind of 
kind of game you're playing with me, it isn't very funny. I know who's playing games. You and your nuts downstairs. Those maniacs. If that ain't about the cutest I ever seen. They can't knock it out of me. You're waiting up here to try something else. I don't know what I've done, but you can't treat me like dirt. Let go of me. Take your head away from me. Shut up in there. We got a pool to pump at 6 a.m. Do you swear you ain't in with them? I want the truth. With you. I know the way. I know the way to the gold. I was going to take you with me. I was going to give you everything you ever wanted. You know, them shoes with buckles. Not just the cheapest, the real diamond buckle. Are you crazy or something? I know what you mean. Okay. You ain't gonna listen to what you hear, but you better know it all. You see, I just got out of prison. You wanna know what I was in for? All right. Manslaughter. Something I didn't do. I don't think I did. Anyway, there was this old guy in prison named Ned Glaze. And they put me in with him. He was the one who first told me about the gold. How do you know? How do you know you can find the way? That was a long time ago. Well, the railroad dump still had to begin with. That mountain, creeks and canyons. That's what we guide by. I've been there longer than time. Joe, I'm scared. For me? Clem Williams. I've seen him hit his mother with a stick because she wouldn't give him five dollars. Couldn't we leave town and come back without him knowing it? Oh, no. No, they know that trail begins at the ranch. They just camp there and wait for us. Oh, we gotta do something to throw them off. Give us a chance to get going before they know it. Get you to the goal before they catch up. Well, how can they catch up with us if we're gone before they know it? Oh, it won't be hard to track us. We gotta move in a jeep. Clem Williams isn't expecting you to leave very soon, is he? Well, he knows I need a car and some money. I got almost $900. And your savings? Maybe I've been saving it for this. I couldn't risk your savings. Well, it's mine to risk. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to pick a time. See, there's going to be a time when that crazy old guy's away from the ranch because he marked our trail and have Clem after us. Hours. Okay, what do we do first? Well, first of all, I'm gonna move out of here. Okay, I'll move too. Uh -uh. No, 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 you stay right here and you act like nothing happened. Act like you don't know nothing, see? Thought you were going fishing. I was. I want you to call every automobile dealer in the county. I want to know every used car, especially Jeeps and pickup trucks, that's been sold during the month of June. And who was sold too? You better check the dealers in Davenport, too. Now I'm going fishing. Oh, 
What'd you do about the Jeep? We had the garage four blocks from the diner. Gas? It's full. Yeah, you better get an extra five-gallon can. That's not the way Point. Should be a mountain road on the other side. What happens if the gold isn't there? It'll be there. If it isn't there, you'll drift, won't you? Just pick up and blow. What would you have me do? I 
worthy of you. None of the things that you want. Maybe I might change my mind about the things I want. But don't do me any favors, because I can get along. What is it? Nothing. I don't hear anything. There it is again. How can they follow us so soon? that gap down there. We just got one more step. We got our hands on the gold. Well, how are we going to get down there? Right. Well, you can't do that. No, we've got to. Sure can't get his car down there, that's for sure. All right, you walk. I'm going to ride with you. Now, look, if anybody's going to get hurt, there's no sense in that being both of us. Now, go on, do like I say. Hurry up. nine lives, didn't you know that? Highway 93. It runs right into Glendale. We could have been here yesterday. Take your foot off that clutch for Welcome. I told you. 
told you Papa told Mama some of the way. This was some of it. Uncle George found his Jap more than 30 years ago. Now, we're going to save you a lot of trouble. You boys and girls are pretty beat out, I'd say. Oh, yes, sir, I'd say you'd had a time of it. Now, Mama's got some picnic lunch, and I've got some beer on ice. So why don't we all just sit around and chew the fat like, huh? Maybe even spend the night here so you boys and girls can get some rest. Now, what do you think about that, huh? to get down to business. Don't you think so, Joe? What if I don't tell you? Somebody's gonna get hurt. You couldn't do nothing worse than kill me. Not you, but her. You see? Joe, they're only bluffing. What do you think, Joe? A quarter of a million bucks is a lot of dough. It's bigger the longer you wait for it. Will you let Hank go? How long are you gonna make me out a fool, Joe? What happens when you find the gold? I'll think about it. I don't especially want nobody to get hurt. So I'll think about it. Yo. Shut up! All right. There's a mule road on the other side of this gap. You follow that road right up the watershed till you see a cliff of caves. Underneath that cliff of caves is a canyon. You go down into that canyon, and you follow it around to your left. After a while, you're going to come to a steep sweep away valley where nothing but mesquite grows. About a thousand yards out, there are two fingers of black lava flow pointing right at you. You walk between them two fingers to where they join. There's the goal. Uncle George, you know that layout? Might have. The country's getting fuzzy in my mind. I just can't seem to remember where I've been. We'll wait till morning. I wish I'd never seen or heard of you. You let them creeps scare you out of the only chance we might have ever had. They wouldn't even done nothing to you. I'm going home. <laughs> Okay. I guess we'll go foot from here.
I knowed when you turned west. I knowed that damn back lake up here. Is that where the gold is, Joe? Out there? Oh, I remember now. Well, here she's black changes. I recollect them two fingers of laver out there, laying in the miskies. That's where the gold is, all right. Why well, better sheep between them? Oh, they built that Hoover Dam. There's where the river runs that made the lake. Lord. Get old somehow. I wonder how old I am. I'm sure I'm old. Bring that stick over here. deep that lake is out there? It's over 200 feet. There's 50 feet of mud under that. Get your rope out of the water and take your family home. Time for that family to get into bad trouble, they almost made it. How did you know? I'm a good cop. I work hard at it. Man, it was you following us. They might have killed us. You're crazy. No more than you two. They've just been looking for that pot of gold a little longer. They'll be back out here next week or the next with a rowboat, steel rods, grappling hooks. They'll die fishing for it. Some people learn the pot's not there. Some don't. I left your jeep off at the top of the road. I'd appreciate a ride back to town whenever you're ready. Thanks for grabbing that big slob shotgun. There's nothing of it. I'm glad we didn't find the gold. What you really are? We didn't have any right to it. And I guess that's why we didn't get it. 
you want to break down to someplace else. I guess that's okay, too. And I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. 